The first step in your heater assembly is going to be to install the uh, bottom output plate here. Um, the best way to do this is there are six bolts, one, two, three, four, five in here, six. Uh, if you remove those from the plastic housing, you'll be able to pry open the housing just, just enough to get this plate in. Uh, you don't want to pull apart the whole heater. Uh, you don't need to here, um, but that'll give you enough uh, space to get this uh, plate underneath the lip around this edge here. Um, the next step is going to be to install your mounting brackets front and back. Here and on the other side. Um, this is all straightforward and then you'll install your valve as you see here. So the lever faces down and the um, cable mount here faces forward to the front of the plane. Um, once you've done this, the next step is to install the hoses, which we'll do now. For the first hose installation, you'll take your full length hose like this and install it onto uh, this uh, port on the heater. Um, then you'll size it up to see where it lines up with uh, your, your valve here and then trim it off there. Uh, the remaining hose piece mounts onto the bottom of the heater like this and your other full length hose piece is very straightforward. It stays as a full length hose piece mounted right here. So this is pretty much the entirety of the assembly for the heater unit itself. Uh, we will install this cable um, for temperature adjustment later on after it's on the plane. So we'll get these hose clamps tightened up now and put this into the airplane. Um, something to make note of about these hose clamps, they're very difficult if not completely inaccessible after your front top skin is on. So you want to make sure that they're seated right and nice and tight right now to avoid any uh, coolant leaks down the line. So here you can see the heater installed into the plane. Uh, sorry I didn't film this before when there was a lot less stuff in here, but um, you'll need to drill and install two M5 rivnuts, one here and one on the other side down here, 32 millimeters down from the top and centered on the channel. Um, other than that, it's just four bolts that holds the heater in and it's a fairly straightforward installation process. So. Um, from there, you'll run your ducts out the bottom, um, one on the far side over there that goes up for your defrost, uh, the silver vent that you can see there. Um, and then the other three will be run for um, <clears throat> the passengers and heating the cabin. Um, the standard sling heating uh, system is fine. Uh, we're not doing that on this particular build. Uh, we're trying something new where we run a duct down the center, uh, as you can see this duct here, and it comes out there and there. You can see one there and one there uh, for the back seats, uh, just to make sure that the heat does get to the back seats. Um, sometimes using the side channel down here uh, gives too much opportunity for the outside cold air to cool that air before it gets back to the back seats. So, um, that's what we're doing on this one. Uh, if you want to use the standard setup, that's just fine. And so, yeah, now we'll get all our ducts attached and move on to wiring it. The next step is to establish your heater wiring. And uh, I like to just clip off the wires and use solder sleeves to a 14 gauge cable um, instead of using a connector here as well as a connector at the uh, switch. So. Basically, yellow is your low speed fan, orange is medium speed fan, red is high speed fan, black is ground. And um, you'll run your ground straight to your um, ground bus. And the other three will go straight to your switch on the dash or on the panel. So I'll show you what the other end of the connection looks like. And this step will be complete. This is the heater switch and your power from your breaker or VPX system, either way the power in goes to the one labeled B here, and then you've got low, medium, and high uh, labeled uh, L, M, and H. 
So that would be yellow to low, orange to medium, and red to high. And you'll just wire that in and straight off the uh, wires I showed on the heater there, and everything should work nicely. The other end of the connection is as you see here, um, and both connections are made the same way, so it's easier to show it off the plane here. You'll slide the metal end of the, uh, the cable here through the outermost hole here and place it down like that. You'll then take the other end, this end of the cable here and rest it in here and just press it in and it will click into position. Um, sometimes you'll find that these cables are a little bit too long for your application. So you'll want to fit it onto the plane with your panel in place and see where the cable rests first. Um, but typically trimming off about 350 millimeters from the length of the cable here, uh, it'll vary depending on your installation and the routing of the cable uh, around the wires and things from your harness. Um, but typically trimming off a little bit of it helps it rest a little bit cleaner and it won't want to droop down uh, at your feet. So the step to do this is you'll just clip off the cable right here at the, uh, the bend. Then you'll remove the whole cable from the other end like this. There will be nothing stopping it once this is clipped off. Then you'll trim your cable to the length that you need. Then reinsert the... Uh, the cable into the tube and about 60 millimeters and you can check it ahead of time if you want but I find that about 60 millimeters when the cable is all the way at the stop on this end put a mark there and then put a bend to basically uh, remake this shape here this little zigzag so about 60 millimeters out you'll put your first bend and then another slight bend and then clip off the remainder there and you should have a perfectly functional, uh, correct length heater cable. The next step is to wire your heater cable. Um, this is the cable that adjusts how much coolant goes through your heater here. And in order to do that, you'll just clip it in with this clip here. And the best way that I've found to do that is to take your heater switch, let's see, this here, and put it all the way to the off position, which is just rotating it all the way to the right. Um, sorry, left. And then when you make your connection to the bottom hole on this heater arm here, you'll push the cable with the switch to the off position all the way to the left, like I said a second ago. You'll push the uh, lever all the way forward to the front of the plane and then clip the tube in where it rests there. That way you know that when the switch is all the way off, um, you are fully shutting that valve there. 